today also brought another round of impeachment hearings in the House Judiciary Committee. During those hearings, Congressman Matt Gates of Florida got into it with the chairman, Jerry Nadler of New York, over Nadler's refusal to make Congressman Adam Schiff testify before the committee. Here's how it went. The implication is we want Schiff in that chair, not you. The implication is the person that wrote the report is the person that should come and present it, and you weren't elected by anybody, and you're here giving this testimony in place of the chairman. I hope that clears up the implication. The gentleman does not have the time, and the gentleman has been warned before. He cannot simply yell out and disrupt the committee. Yeah. Not allowed to make rational points on the Hill. Congressman Matt Gates of Florida joins us in studio tonight. So it looks like you cleared up that implication. I may not be on Jerry Nadler's Christmas card list no. anymore. Uh, in, you know, where I'm from, you stand behind your work. If Adam Schiff really believes the president should be impeached as a result of this conduct, he ought to show up and take our questions based on his bias, his contact with the whistleblower, and anything he was doing outside the bounds of the law. Instead, it was take your donor to work day in the House Judiciary Committee, where some of the left's big donors were able to come in and literally ask each other questions. I mean, it was this dystopian reality where I'm watching one Democrat donor ask questions of another Democrat donor about issues that we could all read about, but they just want to give their hot takes. <laughs> so, such a nice description. Um, the whistleblower. Are we ever going to have public confirmation of this person's identity, and does it matter? Well, it just depends on the day. You know, originally it was Adam Schiff who said the only way to resolve this dispute was to hear from the whistleblower. And then later when the whistleblower's potential connections to members of Adam Schiff's committee or potential connections to presidential campaigns started to leak out in public reporting, well, then all of a sudden nobody wanted to hear from the whistleblower anymore. So who knows what tomorrow will bring? Without using his name, are you satisfied that the person who's been identified as a whistleblower is indeed? The whistleblower? I, I, look, I don't know who the whistleblower is. The only member of Congress who knows who the whistleblower is, is Adam Schiff. Adam Schiff. All right. In a few minutes, we'll be speaking with Ken Starr about today's impeachment hearings. But first, we want to get to this. We want to ask the congressman about the terror attack at the Naval Air Station in Pensacola. Now, the shooting was in your district. It was committed by a Saudi Air Force officer and several other Saudi officers are being investigated this hour as collaborators. The question, the obvious one, is it time for us on the basis of this and other facts to reevaluate our relationship with Saudi Arabia? The first thing we need to do is join Governor DeSantis's call for the kingdom to step up for the victims. The second thing we need to do is what Senator Graham and I will be calling for, and that is an immediate suspension of the program wherein we bring Saudis here to the United States without sufficient vetting to stop something like this, and then uh, we put ourselves at risk. And then absolutely, we need to support the FBI's investigation and not allow anything to impair it. But at some point, we've got to look at this relationship more broadly, Tucker, and wonder how much from Saudi Arabia are we willing to take? Well, especially since we, we don't even have a definitive answer about the Saudi government's role in 9-11. I mean, I, I, you don't think it's definitive? I think it's pretty definitive that members of the Saudi government were involved in supporting the U.S.-based activities of some of those hijackers. I, 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 st I stand corrected. That is exactly right. I think some of the details remain hidden from us, at least from public view, by the U.S. government. What's baffling to me is how there is resilient bipartisan support for maintaining this relationship with one of the creepiest, most repressive nations on earth when we're energy independent. Why are we doing this? Well, because they trade in the U.S., they trade oil in the U.S. dollar. I mean, if, if you really want to have a little truth talk about Saudi Arabia, yes. it's that we need them selling oil in the U.S. dollar in order to maintain the dominance of the dollar and to be able to make our sanctions effective elsewhere in the world, especially among oil-producing nations. But that is not a reason to turn a blind eye to Saudi potential involvement in 9-11, in the shooting in Pensacola. Uh, in, look, when we look at this war in Yemen, Saudi Arabia is engaged in all kind of terrible, atrocious activities, and we continue to sell them arms. If the people who committed those murders or colluded on 9-11 were Iranians, we'd have troops in Tehran right now. And, and I'd probably support it, actually. Yeah, well, I, think, I think there's a good amount of Washington that would like to have troops in Tehran by lunchtime tomorrow, yeah. but that's just the thirst for regime change wars that I'm glad you and I stand against. Congressman Matt Gates, great to see you tonight. Thank you very much.